Nate Davis there now. Did he have a good excuse not to be there when it was voluntary, Grody? And then not really. I mean, we didn't get a chance to talk to him today. He was one of the guys that we requested to speak with. I guess he, according to the PR staff, he declined. I guess we're going to get a chance to talk to him next week. But he was plugged right in out there. I could tell you that. There was no messing around with him. Put right into the into the starting lineup at the offensive line. Um, so they're not messing around this year like they kind of did last year when they were trying to put things together um, and figure out what was best and pulling the surprise prize party with Tevin Jenkins and and everything that went into that and and you know Darnell Wright is still he is the guy at right tackle they're not there either as long as we're talking about the offensive line I can tell you this that I think for the for the first time in the OTAs this year we saw a decent amount of Lucas Patrick playing center today uh both with the first and and the seconds it's still going to be cody whitehair i believe is the starting center but they definitely want to get him tuned up to be the backup center um or you know a spot uh, as far as guards and backing up injuries all right so a lot of big names spoke today grody where, yes. you know I, I see we have uh, some jalen johnson luke getsy yes. Cole Komet, jaquan brisker where uh, where do you believe we should begin we're starting hot off the presses here parkins we just got done speaking with jalen johnson so i'm gonna i just put this little chunk together it's right from the beginning and then it'll skip up to the contract talks but jalen johnson at his first ota he was kind of funny when he stepped right up to the mic and he kind of looked at all of us in the media and and said, hey, here you guys have been looking for it. So you, you know we've been talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did we overdo it? I've just been hearing about it. I don't know what what was said too much, but I mean, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to answer whatever questions you got. People were worried that you were you might be holding on for a contract thing. Is there any, is that any of that in your brain, in your mind right now? Not even close. Nah. Nah, nah, that's not... No, and I feel like if anybody knows me, that's not that's not my character. Um, and I think at the end of the day, for for me, me, I won't even say hold now. I mean, just having prior prior priorities. Um, and at the end of the day, everybody knows I have a three year old daughter back at home in California. And I mean, I'm a dad before I'm anything else. Um, before I'm a football player, before I'm anything. I mean, I'm I'm a dad. First, so I mean, I don't get to spend too much time with her and uh, during season because she's back at home in California. So, me in the off season, I take I take pride in being a dad. I'm not just a any old type of dad that just comes and sees their kid whenever. Like, no, I'm present. I'm spending time. I'm putting my heart into my daughter. So, when it comes to the off season, I, I take that serious, and I think that I communicated that communicated with that to the coaches, and they understood and hopefully respected it. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna be there for my, for my daughter. And I mean, because they can find another corner, my daughter can't find another dad. So, I mean, I take, I take part in that. You said you, you are eligible for an extension, and I'm sure you feel you've earned it. What yes, is your approach going to be this season as far as the timing, the progress of getting that done? Uh, and what do you have to do to get it done? What you might, you know? I mean, for me, I don't have to do too much. I just go out and continue to be who I am, continue to be the player I am, get him, keep getting better, keep finding ways to improve my game, um, and then really just find ways to win. I think for me, I'm not too – too worried about it. I mean, of course, the contracts and stuff, there are going to be talks, there's going to be some things that get brought up, but at the end of the day, that's that that's above me to an extent, just trying to stay focused and keep the main thing the main thing, and when that comes up, handle that situation when it comes. What did, what did Roquette's situation have any, what effect did that have on you with regard to that, with, you know, getting paid? Was, I don't was think. There effect, did that have any effect? That... Nah, I mean, his situation. What you might have to do to get things done. His situation is different than my situation. I mean, it's Roquan Smith at the end of the day, but, I mean, I'm not him. He's not me. My timing is different than his timing, so I'm not too caught up in that. How do you feel about the initial stage of that conversation with the Bears about a contract extension? Say it again. How do you feel about how things have started out as far as the initial stage of you looking for a contract extension going into the season and them being willing to agree on a number with you? Uh, I don't feel any type of way. I'm not going to feel any way until a deal gets done. Or to a deal to say that it's not being done. So, are you hopeful for an extension this off season? One hundred percent. I look forward to staying and extending with the Bears. Let me ask you a question, Mark Grody. Um, if he communicates with mm-hmm. the coaches and says, "I'm just going to be focused on my daughter here, and I'm at about I'll be here in two weeks," do the coaches have any responsibility at all to voice that to the media and thereby the fans? 
No, I don't think so. No, I mean, I, I think that Matt Eberflus has handled it pretty well when he's been asked about Jalen Johnson. Obviously not asked about him today in, in regards to him missing, but you know, the, co- the, the coaches would be wrong right now to come out and say anything like, oh, we would think he should be here. He's a leader, and you know, he's he's well, here's our top cornerback. As long as it's bargained that the players have that advantage or that loophole, then nobody should say anything. Quite frankly, <laughs> you know, I, I they it, signed it. It's, I, it's voluntary. I, so I, I guess if you say something about one player, then maybe you'll be expected to say it about another, Danny. Because like just out of kindness, you could say, oh yeah, we know why Roquan, why why Jalen's not here, and he'll, he'll be back, and the, and all is well. Yeah, I mean, I, I well, they did say that. They, they they did say all is well, and that we'll we'll see him soon. They did not say anything about his daughter or prior commitments because of what I think what you just said, right? Then you'd have to do it about everybody if you mm-hmm. if, if you if you got specific. I mean, it was a great line by by Jalen, like they can get another cornerback, but she can't get another dad, and like that he takes it seriously. But I'm with you, Grody. Like, it's collectively bargained. These are employees. They have a union. Like if you have a job where you have a strict number of vacation days. So you get 15 vacation days a year. And if you don't take those vacation days, they don't pay you out for those vacation days at the end of the year. If you don't take your 15 vacation days, you're working for free for the company. You know, like you as employees, you get things that are sent to you and given to you. And like you earn them through whatever uh, the stipulations are of your employment. So, I'm surprised that these things are as well attended as they are, frankly, because I don't think it all matters all of that much, and it is voluntary. I, his situation is also very different than Roquan Smith's. Um, I, Potsy with those questions. like Roquan was a first-round pick. Roquan got paid. There was a fifth-year option that had a bunch of money. There was a signing bonus that was more money uh, than than Jalen has made. Like Ro- Roquan, uh, the the positions like Roquan not a premium position, Jalen a premium position. I I get what he's saying in terms of like Roquan had to hold out and ultimately had to be traded in order to get paid. But I I think these are apples and bowling balls. I I do not think that there's much in common between Roquan Smith and Jalen Johnson. The thing that Jalen Johnson did tell us today, did share with us today, he does not have an agent right now, it doesn't sound like. So just as you were saying, there's no similarities. I was trying to tell you that there are, there is that. However, however, Jalen Johnson did say to us today that he plans to hire an agent and let us hope that he does. Um, so there is that. As far as the players are concerned, today, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's do Luke Getzey, the Bears offensive coordinator on everything Justin Fields today. I just hope we win games, whatever it takes to win games. I'm not really interested in whichever, whichever, whatever way that looks other than, you know, we have a particular play style that we expect and demand. Hey Luke, has Justin been uh, more vocal about wanting to pass more? It's been pretty clear that he wants, I mean, he wants passing numbers as opposed to running numbers. Well, yeah, I mean, that's he should, right? Um, I think he's been most vocal about wanting to win, so that's what we talk about most and how we can improve that and give us an opportunity to go win as many games as we possibly can. He's, he is focused, and we have the conversations. That's the you're talking about, where, where your growth is and the types of conversations we're having now in that room you know, are, are really you know, a different level than they were last year as far as where he can go with his growth and everything. They're saying all the right things, man. I love hearing that, that the, the different level of conversations, because that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, but it it worries me. It sounds like Matt Nagy 2.0. Mm. Uh, do, does it re- I'm curious, Grody. We'll go more in depth on this later, but does it remind you anything of that? Like, or do you think that they know that he's taking the leap? Like how well, what, what's your what's it, your what's your radar it, tell you? It it reminds me a little bit of Trubisky in that. It feels like we are still struggling, I guess, as a media beat, or I'll just point the thumb at getting concrete things out of the coaches in terms of what Justin Fields is doing better as a thrower. You know, they always revert, it feels like, to the leadership things and this guy in meetings is incredible and he's the first guy here and the last guy out and all of that stuff. And it just 
like I'm still just not hearing enough about Justin Fields. Where has he actually improved in terms of throwing the football, reading defenses, getting to open wide receivers? We got some of that. I sent the Andrew Janoco in, um, and I asked him that specifically um, in terms of that. You know, I said, you know, aside from leadership, aside from you know, he's great in the meetings and all of that. You know, and, and Janoco said, yeah, you know, he is getting better and more authoritative with his throws and things like that and reading defenses. It's all improved. But that's the part we want to see. And I'm at the point now where well, I'm good with the leadership. I'm good with what he's like in meetings. I'm good with the respect that his teammates have with him. I'm, I'm kind of like done with that. Like that's not going to be part of my – I'm going to try not to make that part of my reports at this point. Because plenty was said again today, guys about the leadership and all of the intangibles. But I feel like as a reporter and, you know, what we're doing out here, we got to move on from that. And those questions are going to be asked, but I'm not going to waste as much time playing that stuff. Good. As opposed to, like, let's get concrete stuff on Justin Fields because we don't get it. Hey, man, it's the same as last year in terms of disregarding the wins and the losses and focusing on the development of the quarterback. Let's elevate the conversation. We'll do our part here. You do your you do your part there. Get to get nice and specific. And um, and and we'll be we'll be looking for that. And you got partners in that here. Yeah, yeah, as long as and everybody listens. And I'm sure people listening, too. And I'm sure, you know, your textures will back it up or not. I'm sure they're tired of hearing about it. And I think that it's it's incredibly important that he is that, that Justin Fields got to that point where he is a leader, that he, that he is at a higher educational level in the meetings. Um, all of that is extremely essential to Justin Fields and this football team being good. But I think it's there, and I just think it's not really worth discussing much anymore. What is worth discussing, uh, I think, is uh, Chase Claypool who, again, was not participating. matter of fact, I didn't see him on the field. I think he was here. Uh, but he remember last week he had suffered a soft tissue injury. Um, and there's been so much positive about Chase Claypool in this offseason because of the remarkable little difference that Justin Fields has talked about in him. Let's hear if Luke Getze is seeing it the same way. What have you seen from him that's different now than when he left the building in December? Comfortability within the the building, you know, whether that's being you know being around the head coach, being around us on the offensive staff, his teammates, and then most importantly, right, Justin. I think that relationship is always uh, the most important, right, the quarterback receiver relationship. So I think all of that's improving, and um, you know, in, in as far as his knowledge of what's going on around it, that's that's improving because we we demand a lot of that position as, as we've talked about here plenty of times. So that's. Uh, that's a big part of what we do with that with that role, and so uh, it's it's been good to see him be able to to, to take a step there. To Josh's question on Claypool, looking back last year, coming in midseason, how much of a grasp did he have on the scheme, and what was reasonable to expect in that scenario? That's a that's a pretty hard question to, to answer because that's it's too vague. I think I think you know he came in, he did a great job of diving in. Uh, you know, had a little bit of success, and then he got dinged, and then now, now you have time away from the, the that relationship that you're growing with your quarterback, and then he and he finished up the season there at the end. So to say where he is now, obviously he's he's definitely in a much better place. That's what's most important, and uh, like uh, like Coach Flus and those guys have said, I think that his his uh, positivity, his optimism coming in this thing, and, the, and his attack and his approach, the way he's trying to learn this thing is is really cool to see. You talked about it last year, Groats, that Claypool was a guy who was looking forward to offseason and OTAs and everything, and he seems to be hitting the ground running in a contract year, so it's all timing out well. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that guy is such a big deal in terms of um, you know what the team is going to do this year. It's a, it's a big deal for Ryan Poles because of what he paid for him in a second rounder, so it's, it's almost imperative that we're hearing these kinds of things that the connections are made. Also, just a follow up before we get to the, the players here, guys. Uh, I talked to uh, Tyke Colbert today, the, the Bears wide receivers coach, and you know his, his indication was he wasn't giving us anything exact about when when uh, Chase Claypool would be back on the field. But it sure sounds like uh, it's possible that he'll be practicing during the mini camp next week, and that I'd be shocked if he if he wasn't good to go for for. Uh, for training camp. Let's get you a couple more players that did speak today, guys. Um, and we'll start with Jaquan Brisker. 
Brisker was great. I got a feeling that Jaquan Brisker is going to be like Jaquan Brisker was a pretty good talker last year. I got a feeling that he's going to start to step up even more with us and with the team and leadership roles and all that. Because one of the things that he was asked today was, you know, did, did you glean anything positive from last year's season and all that being a rookie and making an impact? And he said, no, he said nothing good came out of last year. And here's more from Jaquan Brisker. I feel like last year, you no, know, I, I came in, um, just, I feel like I was just moving too fast. Like I was moving, like I caught up to the game, but you know, when I messed up my thumb and things like that, um, I feel like when I came back, I was trying to like move too fast instead of, you know, being under control, um, you know, being myself, making plays and, you know, not giving up certain things or, you know, not being consistent. You know, I'm usually, I'm consistent, you know, a leader and things like that. And, um, and you see it during the OTA this year. I'm, you know, a lot of different energy. You know, I'm flying around and you know, playing both safeties and things like that. So definitely gonna get a different nine this year. So slow. You said going too fast for a while. So yeah, I was moving too fast. Yeah, I was just feel like I was like my footwork wasn't you know well. On my eyes, a little dirty and things like that. So cleaned all that up. So I'm good now. I've never heard it said like that. Me neither. His eyes I, were I've dirty. Say, I've, I've, clean, I've cleaned it up, of course. I've never heard my eyes were dirty. He's got to drop a little visine in there, a little wiper. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. But that yeah. that's interesting because, like, we we all hear them guys say, you know, the game slows down for me. But then right. you could play fast, right? What what is what is Wani's thing? Uh, like clear mind, fast feet, right? Like, like oh yeah, yeah. You, you know, like that that that's that's what that sounds like to me. That's that, like he understands it. It slows down. Then he'll uh, be able to play faster. Let's hear from the next player, Grody. All right, last guy that I've answered is uh, Cole Komet um, with us today. And I love this because he was asked about DJ Moore, and he couldn't help himself. I mean, I don't want to get too far. I mean, it's OTAs right now, so you can tell. I mean, you, you see his tape in Carolina, and, you know, you see what he does just on the field and routes versus air and just how he moves, um, that he's going to be a big impact player for us. And, um, you know, for the tight end room, it's big. You know, you got a guy that, that can threaten vertically and, um, can do those things and open up zone and holes for us. Um, so it, it's really exciting. And along with the other receivers that we got with, you know, Darnell, Chase, uh, Dante, I think it's going to be, uh, I think it'll be a good group there. And um, we're looking forward to see how it goes. Contract year, did you talk with your agent about looking at a potential extension or did you talk with the team at all? Or is that something you just kind of put off to the side? Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, my agent handles that. You know, I pay them a good amount of money. That's that's on them to take care of it. So, um yeah, they're handling all that type of stuff. Do you think about it at all? Uh, no, I got a I got a year to prepare for, so that's that's my mindset. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you hope that happens, and you want to, you know, maybe get it done. But uh, like I said, at this point, I just kind of let my my agents handle that deal. Routes versus air for DJ Moore. I don't I don't know what that means, but I like it. Well, no. routes versus you're, you're not being guarded by anybody, so it's just yeah. literally speaks. The air oh, yes, that you're going the air. up against, the atmosphere, got it. Uh, the being, the organic. He's destroying world. the air. He's he's dominating yeah. the air. <laughs> the air, air is a big story today. Air's coming oh, yeah. indoors in New York. They're yeah. not canceling baseball games yet. DJ uh, Moore's dominating the air. I flew yeah. in the air today. Lots yeah. happening. Oh my god! Yeah, I hear you. I hear you're in KC, Parco. Right? Yeah, lot, lots happening today. Yeah, a few things, guys. I know you guys probably got to go here, but Eddie Jackson was back out there and he was practicing. It was really good to see. I was surprised he was back this early. Told you that Jalen Johnson and Nate Davis, you guys have been talking about that as well. But I enjoyed watching the, the Bears second round quarterback Tyreek Stevenson today. He was playing on the outside with the ones. Saw him on practicing on the left side. Saw him practicing on the right side. Uh, play of the day today for sure was about a 20 to 25 yard play right up the middle from Justin Fields to DJ Moore, it was it was something to see for sure, just because you want to see that. Um, there was a terrific defensive play today. Justin Fields at quarterback, DJ Edwards tips it. Elijah Hicks, the second-year safety, intercepts it. Uh, and I did see the Bears uh, at one point in time. Justin Fields going deep to uh, to the rookie uh, Tyler Scott, the wide receiver, a deep ball for him, which he overthrew in the end zone. Oh, my God. Sorry. And on a bad note, season's, Bears. Sorry. Season's over. Sorry. See, I just report what I have written down here on my little notepad. See you, Grody. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bears.